All right, this portion here is going to cover the understanding of Ishtar being the queen of heaven and being intimately connected with Israel in the past and then false Israel today. And we know how false Israel has evolved because of the 10 lost tribes business. And then we have to realize that we see these current world leaders being influenced by Egyptian English Templar Freemasonry. And they consider themselves to be this lost remnant and have taken upon themselves to fulfill the role of Yahweh's proclamations here in the end times. So false Israel is by all logic and reason following the Bible and the proclamations. And this is why we see it happening so symbolically, perfectly with the Bible. So in order to show this connection, that's going to connect back up to another video. You're going to see some information that even tonight that connects up with what is in the video from 777 AEJ. And if you read in the description box, she has some scriptures there that quote in Revelation 12 concerning Israel in this eagle. Well, we're going to look at this possibly tonight, if we can get to it, about the parable of the great eagle. That's right. The spirit of truth is not going to let you down. It's not going to let any of us down. The question is, are people that are with her going to see this? And if she is real and true, is she going to see this? Because this parable of the great eagle is going to tie back up to chapter 19 of Ezekiel. That's going to tell us what it's exactly, exactly about. And it's the same thing we're talking about, Ishtar. Thy mother is like a vine in thy blood, planted by the waters. She was fruitful and full of branches by reason of many waters. All right, now let's go ahead and refer back to this. Moreover, take thou up lamentation for the princes of Israel and say, What is thy mother, a lioness? She lay down among the lions. She nourished her whelps among young lions. Now remember in Deuteronomy 33, Dan is predicted as coming back as a lion's whelp. And I told you that these lions' whelp are the sons of God, and the lions' whelps that of it are of Ishtar are of the fallen sons of God. This whole story is how the sons of God get corrupted, and it will tie up to the symbolism of the Sphinx, a.k.a. Phoenix symbolism that is right there at the Great Pyramid. And of course, you have to remember, everything that we're talking about to do with Babylon has something to do with great. And it all is unstoppable in its truth. Now that's what we're going to have coming when we talk a little bit about the videos that I'm going to do that are going to compare her interpretation that she's offering. Now, now you should see that we need to figure out who is this mother that is now being considered like this blood vine that is not a good thing, as you'll see as you read further. Who is this mother of the princes of Israel that is seeking to corrupt these young lions? Well, it is none other than Ishtar. And we would go back to Jeremiah chapter 7 and read right here. And that's going to be verse 18. The children gather wood and the fathers kindle the fire. There's a lot of talk about fire going on right now. It seems to be some Christians are real giddy about some supposed fire that's going to come on the earth. And the women need their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. I'll be back.